Hand scrambles suck. I think we can just all agree that computer-generated scrambles are just better. Well, most of the time. Today, I'm going to try and fix that problem. I'm going to try and make hand scrambles better by making them more like computer-generated scrambles. In order to accomplish this, we need to understand how computer-generated scrambles work. The first thing a computer does is generate a random solvable cube state, and then it solves it and inverses the solution to give a scramble for that cube state. So the real first step is learning how a computer solves a Rubik's Cube. Now computers don't use CFOP or RU or anything like that. In fact, they use a completely different method called the Korff's algorithm. Korff's algorithm is not possible to be performed by humans, but it is a more efficient variant of Kosiemba's algorithm, which is a more efficient version of the Thistleweight algorithm, which can be done by humans. So that's what we're going to use. Here's how it works. First, it makes all the edges good. Then, we get all white or yellow on the top and bottom, like this. And then we make it so that we can solve it using only double moves, like this. And then, we solve it. During the first step, you can do any move. You can do either a single move or a double move on any side. And then, in the second step, you can use single moves on all the sides except for the front and back, where you can only use double moves. And then in the third step, you can only use double moves on all of the front, back, left, and right sides, and you can use single moves or double moves on the top and bottom. And then, during the last step, you can only use double moves. Now that we know how to solve the cube like a computer, we just have to inverse our solution. But we don't have the solution, Otherwise, we would have already solved it. So what we do is we just do random moves within the constraints of each step. First, we start with the fourth step, because that is the one that would come first, because we inversed it. So we do only double moves. And once you feel that it's fairly mixed, you move on to the next uh, constraint, which now allows you to do single U moves and single D moves but you have to use double moves on the left, right, front, and back sides still. So, And then, in the next step, we're allowed to do single moves on the right and left sides and the top and bottom sides, but we're still forced to only use double moves on the front and back. And then, in the final step, we're allowed to do single moves on all the sides. So this is the step where you want to make sure that you're using F and B moves so that you get some bad edges. And then you should get a cube that looks quite scrambled. This method works really well, but here are some extra tips and tricks that will make it work even better. Tip number one is to scramble the cube with a different orientation each time. That way you get more random scrambles. Now, instead of just scrambling the cube with white on top and green on front, like you always do, you might want to try maybe putting blue on top and red on front. That way you get more random scrambles. Tip two is to use back moves, left moves, and down moves just as often as you use R, U, and F moves. This is because that's how computers solve and scramble cubes. The third tip is that you want to re-grip. Now, normally when you're solving, you don't want to regrip, but if you haven't noticed yet, when, with a computer-generated scramble, it's random, and it's oftentimes involves regripping a couple times. Number four. Actually, that's it. Subscribe, because I would really appreciate that. And also, do you like my new main? It's the uh, Along GT from way back in 2015. It's non-magnetic and re-stickered, if you can't tell by the horrible sticker job I did. Uh, okay, I'm just kidding. Uh, I lost my main, the Maylong 3x3 SM, uh, self-magnetized or strong magnets, however you interpret that. Don't forget to like the video, and what do you think of my new cube logo?